Hello there. So in this movie, what I want to look at is a frequently occurring task for many people and an almost daily task for some people. And I want to give you an idea of how it was prior to CC 2014 and how it is now. So I'm going to emulate being in CS6 here to do this sports table. So what I'm going to go along with is that this is something that is updated every week inside of a publication and it has the current ranking there in the table and all of the games and so on from there. And so you'd have to do things like if another game was played, you'd have to update this table, for example, and change everything over there for how the score was and that kind of thing. But these would change. So let's say that the charging donkeys here have suddenly moved to the top of the table over average Joes. And just for an idea of scale, I actually went to see somebody just the other week who has to do this on a weekly basis with several tables that cover the top 100 in their industry. So, you know, for some people, it's a real headache, this kind of thing. So what people would typically do is they would do something like this. They'd introduce uh, a row above the row they're going to work on or you know depending on your workflow so you'd have a blank row like so you would then copy out the information from the row you need to move so maybe if I cut that information oops if I just uh, copy that information from there so you would then highlight this row and then you'd paste that information down then you'd copy the information from this row or sorry remove this row just here so if I went to do that and of course, then you can see that I'm getting in a muddle already because it's just quite a job of work just here. But you do this kind of thing and then you'd resolve that and you'd clear all of the tables. So it would take you some time. Even to do one could take you a good few minutes. And especially when you've got to do things like move the images around that go with the logos of the teams there like so. Let's go into InDesign CC and have a look at how we might do that and how we might work even smarter. So the very first thing I'm going to note here, right, is that images appear in table cells in InDesign CC. And so I can just move uh, these things around or copy the whole row here, for example, if I just do that for a moment and copy that. And if I wanted to overwrite this row, then I could do that. And you can see that the image goes along with it. I'm just going to undo that. But there's another level of clever here because one of the things you can do in InDesign CC is you can select a row and then just move the row like so. And then, of course, you just have to update the information here. And, of course, these ranking numbers would change. So when I was looking at this with the person that had to do uh, really, really big tables with this, and it takes her a significant amount of her day to do this, she asked, is there a way for me to do these numbers automatically right because everything else is fair enough that's just new data right but is there a way for me to do this stuff automatically just to take one more thing out of that and actually there is and so what I'm going to show you first of all here is that this uses a, a paragraph style just here in fact if I click in a good instance because it's sort of an override there changing the alignment of that but if I do this and go into the style options Right, you'll see this sets the character color here to white, for example, and all the basic character formats are just there. It's my basic table style. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new style based on that, but it just does one thing. It creates a list. So if I come along and choose new paragraph style, then I'm going to call this a auto number. There like so. You can call it, of course, whatever you like. But it's based on the basic table style. And now I'm going to come down to bullets and numbering. And then I'm going to change the list type here to numbers. OK. And once I've done that, so by default, this will add in a tab after a period and the number just there. So I'm just going to back that up. OK. And so I'm just going to get the number and make sure continue from previous is on. And that's actually it, right? That will just generate a number. So if I click OK, I've now got a style that will do the work for me. So what I need to do is apply it. Now, obviously, it needs to have something. In fact, if I selected that whole 
uh, row just there, I could actually do that and I could even make it part of a cell style, but that's not what I'm after. So you can see that it's got those things. The numbers are appearing in front. I'm just going to undo that. Right, so I need something there to hold that, and so I'm going to use a space character to do it. And so to replace these numbers, remember I'm working along uh, the example that someone who has a hundred rows in their table isn't going to want to do all of this in one go. So let's try and do find and change to do that. So if I just do Command F here, Control F of course on the PC, and go to grep, then I can get it to find things. So the first thing I'm going to get it to do, I'm going to get it to find me any digit just there. And then I need a pattern for that. So this is where these match and repeat patterns come in. So I'm going to say zero or more times. Okay, so that's how that looks as a grep query. And then if it finds that, I want to ch change it to a white space character. And I'm actually going to use a thin space, so something that hardly exists there, really, really thin. And that's the grep for that. Finally, I'm going to change this to selection because I have that column selected just there. So that's what I want it to search for. So I'll do find next and it's searching that. And if I just carry on, you can see it's finding exactly the right thing. So I'll now select change all. OK, and so it's updated that with the 10 replacements just there. So now there's a thin space in each one of these characters. And actually, I could have applied that character style or paragraph style rather from there at the same time. But I'll just do it now because there's just a thin space in there. If I choose auto number, the list kicks in like so, which means now if uh, maybe the purple cobras have a really, really good week and they jump up to number one, I can drag those up. They're auto numbered like so. Because the table has an alternating row colouring structure, that just kicks in as well. And the lumberjacks, maybe they're not going to have such a good week. Uh, they're going to drop down here to number eight. And so everything works. And that's how much faster that is with just a little bit of setup inside of InDesign CC. I hope you find that tip really useful. And maybe you'll want to tweet to me at Tony Harmer and let me know how you get on with that.